Белые ботинки, брюки, клеш, а папа не по наследству финский нож, кепка в клетку, галстук от кутюр. Okay. Okay, we, we restart with the second part of this uh, event. Welcome uh, to everyone that just arrived. I see some new faces. Um, after the, the presentation of the project that we are, we are uh, doing, which is the one on the left, we are very honored to host the first iteration of the Data Prevention Manifesto, which is a new project being launched uh, here uh, in this moment, in this very moment is happening. So, like, you are, you know, no fear of missing out. You are in the right place <laughs> at the right time. Prepare your social network uh, gizmos and you know, go crazy <laughs> or not. <laughs> Maybe they will all break all of a sudden. Um, but basically, well, we have the honor to have with us uh, Herr Plovik, a uh, uh, theoretician, uh, founder of the Institute of Network Cultures in Amsterdam which is publishing at the price of cost and uh, releasing online free for download a lot of the critical texts analyzing the current situation in the digital world uh, and always really on the, on the pioneer side of the theory that uh, concerns us in terms of what is happening with all this uh, development, with all this, uh, can I say, bubble <laughs> inflating because it's probably a bubble <laughs> theory. Uh, so, well, uh, one thing that uh, uh, we have now is an iteration. I understand it's an open document. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's facilitated by Kert. Yeah. And uh, basically, uh, we have first a discussion about the very, very interesting angles that uh, I, I, in the first conversation with Kert, understand they're coming up. And then we have a performative reading of the manifesto. So, um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a meeting in an Indian restaurant, in fact, uh, with a couple of people. And but Rob van Kralen, they were forgetting, I have to mention him, he was uh, there. Um, and we said, well, we need to maybe put something on top of DAOs and maybe, you know, invite more people to, to join it in, in multiple uh, ways. And very soon we, uh, we came up with the idea that um, uh, this uh, concept of the data prevention was uh, somewhat, it, it wasn't really empty, it wasn't really an empty signifier, uh, but still we, yeah, we could associate it with many things that were, were going on. But at the same time, we knew that the concept also had a lot of potential. And so there was already something um, uh, boiling, there was something coming up. But, uh, and then, yeah, when you have that feeling, you know, uh, it's time to act. <laughs> it's time to uh, do something. So um, we thought, well, let's, let's just first together um, figure out what data prevention uh, could be. Um, and invite a lot of uh, people uh, in our scene uh, to see, you know, what the potential uh, of this idea uh, could could be uh, beyond maybe even uh, uh, DAOs and beyond, uh, you know, a lot of uh, artworks and uh, exp experiments, prototypes. Uh, yeah, there's a, a lot uh, that um, uh, we. Uh, in a very short amount of time, uh, a dinner, maybe less than an hour, we came up with so many ideas that uh, we thought, okay, now, now, now we need to uh, um, write it. And um, so it, the text as it is now, it's written by maybe eight people. 
Some of them are here, four or five of them, so three are not here. Um, the URL for the pad, if you are interested to, uh, you know, to add your ideas to it, it's possible. So Jeremy, uh, can if you let him know, he will send you the URL of the pad. Huh? Yes. Yeah. So uh, uh, it, it's like a Google Doc, uh, you know, um, but instrument. Better. Huh? But better. But better. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, and also in our own. <laughs> Actually, it's answer. encrypted, the very secret. Oh, yeah. You can write whatever you want on it. Yeah. Nobody will ever oh, find no. out. No. It's a secret. Uh, no. In fact, it's not at all secret. So, <laughs> 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 yeah. I know. It, it is more in the, from the department of the open conspiracies, if you remember those. Eh? Yeah. Anyway, so uh, the idea of the data prevention is. Uh, Still open. Of course, um, it's somewhat a little bit polemic, but uh, one of the first things uh, we thought, of course, that data prevention is really different strategy from data protection. Uh, so the, the two things really need to be uh, distinguished. Uh, and maybe also um, we thought about you know what could come after, let's say, the filters and the ad block. And, uh, and so on and so on, right? All the um, the things, the add-ons uh, that uh, that we will um, uh, have to install uh, in our browsers and so on, and so on right? So, what could be uh, the next thing? And here, of course, DAOs is, is an example uh, of that. Relatively uh, simple concept with enormous consequences, hmm? and. Um, so, uh, here is the, uh, the, te the text, uh, basically uh, it consists of uh, two parts, one is more like the manifesto part, maybe like a 20th century, the other part, uh, you know, 20th century literary uh, <coughs> version of uh, writing a text together and so on, making bold statements. Uh, but the other part uh, is more uh, the sermon part, the psalm part. <laughs> so it can be sung. Uh, uh, we can. Uh, I already immediately suggested that we invite a robot to sing, but uh, <laughs> the, the army thought it was not so good idea to uh, uh, to have a robot sing the song. But uh, yes, um, so there there is another part which is maybe a bit more lyric. Anyway, um, we had the idea that um, uh, another layer of this should really uh, be uh, a science fiction layer. So it's very important um, to, uh, to have that. All right, uh, so I'm, the text is a bit already a bit too long, so maybe one of the first people who, who joined the path could uh, take up the task of deleting a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of stuff and a lot of fluff. Um, but anyway, <laughs> of course you can also add your ideas, but um, all right. So um, I'll, I'll read a few paragraphs and then we can uh, discuss uh, also the content and the strategy itself. Right. Where, where can we take this idea next? Because that's what, what it's all about. Hmm? The privacy discourse sputtered out of steam. This has led to the current stalemate. We know we're observed, traced, and tracked, but pretend it's not happening or nothing to fret about. The question is not when, uh, the, uh, when the repressed will return, but how. Hackers have been proclaiming that privacy has been dead for decades, that everything can and will be captured, stored, and analyzed. And they were right. So, what's to be done? What's the best way to pre protect one's self, if not prevent to transmit data in the first place? Yeah, so maybe that's the essential idea. A factual hindrance of data coming into being. How to convene a collective dimension of social networking without being aggregated in huge data silos, externalness yet 
uh, profiting on us. And maybe there you can also see a little bit of the, let's say, unlike us uh, agenda uh, that we've been uh, working on at the uh, Institute of Natural Cultures for the last five years. Uh, so can we design an alternative uh, architectures for uh, the social media that we like? Uh, so it's related to that. How can we reclaim autonomy in our everyday life knowing that there are all these sensors, bots and algorithms that are active? How can these technologies ever be decommissioned? Uh, are, we, uh, are we perhaps waiting for a great showdown, a world war, a millennial cyber attack that brings down the entire infrastructure? A bad solar flare? Uh, some people are really waiting for this uh, as, as a kind of liberation. Um, or an electro electronic magnetic pulse uh, that knocks down uh, the, the power grid um, and erases all uh, hard drives. Uh, so this is kind of a, uh, a cataclysmic uh, moment um, where we kind of in one moment, in one second, are liberated from all, all this. <laughs> Or are we about to fall asleep and mumbled um, uh, forever, having accepted that everything we do, think and desire can and will be stored and can be used uh, against us. So that is more like uh, the, the dozing, let's say, uh, <clears throat> where we are numbed. We need to decodify contestation in order to multiply the lines of f uh, f flight outside of calculated settings. We need to ask the hard questions too. Do ad blockers, filters, firewalls, close reading of terms and conditions and online protests of the collection and reselling of private data merely mitigate the problems that are at stake or perhaps more to the point, what logic does data prevention uh, participate? So where, where, in what field do we enter? Is it effectively the same logic hmm? uh, it aims to cloak and hide from? Why do we think life can be in informalized? What desire feeds the notion that big data can be transformed into a no knowable, manipulated, gained, anticipated, preempted, capitalized and controlled life? Are we hedging uh, and, and feeding uh, the unicorns or Frankensteins? We're not talking about the weather. Let's move from protection to the design of a serum or anti-serum. Uh, I wasn't really sure there. Uh, is it a serum or an anti-serum? I, I don't know. Or I. I've also called it a deep serum. When you think of the levels that we, that we saw, yeah, where the serum uh, kind of uh, only kicks in on a level below. So it is in fact not an anti serum, it's a deep serum because it's not going against, but something like that. Anyway, so that needs to be still worked out. Do not feed the platforms. Uh, then this is, uh, of course, a variation of do not feed trolls, but yeah, that's, uh, this is the big, <laughs> the big issue, let's say. We're proposing creative sabotage. And I have to say, uh, we had a lot of discussion in our uh, group uh, whether we can call uh, this uh, creative sabotage or not. Uh, because the art of prevention seems quite naive. Uh, and it's not necessarily uh, active in the sense of sabotage. However, uh, uh, some of us also thought, well, maybe it is sabotage precisely because you do it. Huh? And because you do it, uh, this on-off switch, that in itself huh, is already read by many authorities, startups and uh, engineers as something that is very worrying, that is in fact an act of sabotage. But sabotage maybe in a, you know, in a, in a different way. So, and we're talking here about creative sabotage. Concrete forms of prevention that undermine the big data regimes on all levels. 
from the molar to the mo molecular. Let's take uh, concrete steps towards an overall uh, data reduction. Uh, data reduction, yeah. yeah. I have a little bit of a problem because I always try to deconstruct my own uh, Calvinistic uh, approaches and when I write down data reduction I always think oh that's the internal Calvinist <laughs> in me, <laughs> we need to reduce data, <laughs> why not be abundant, come on what's the problem, <laughs> why not be more <laughs> Why not be more baroque? Why not be more? Huh? Anyway, so data reduction. Okay, let's let's stick to this uh, this idea. At least we need to uh, you know be aware. Maybe there is a cultural agenda in there. Uh, we no longer feed the data hungry uh, minority report machines that are programmed to identify emerging erratic behavior. Uh, so th this is uh, this is the uh, important part. That prevention sounds innocent. That, so there's a slightly, yeah. Uh, who, what can be said against prevention? Uh, but make no mistake, uh, it's not innocent. In many cases, prevention itself is already seen as a crime. Uh, so in many cases, pe uh, people ran into trouble just because they were preventing something. Do we only talk about preventing events from happening? Yeah, so that's the minority report aspect of it. Or are we also generating new scenarios? And that's more like the, the offensive part. Data prevention is a, re is a direct response to the top-down smart city technologies. Yeah? And we aim to uphold the preventive strike. And so there you see maybe also some parts maybe in the manifesto that deal with the urban question and with the military aspect of it uh, that maybe needs to uh, be expanded. Data prevention is part of a longer history from the Native American uh, Indian Americans being uh, against having pictures of themselves taken as they will have their souls stolen Two punks in the street of London refusing to have pictures of them taken back in the 1970s. Before we launch our cam uh, campaign and gather the many ideas how to design products and services that do not gather data, yeah, so you can already see the sticker, yeah, not, uh, not gathering data, yeah. oh yeah, I want that fridge, yeah. Yeah. so uh, something like that. <coughs> So, products that do not um, uh, gather data. Hmm? It is important to say farewell to the premise that data is the oil of the 21st century. Huh? Not because this is kind of the, the original myth, let's say. Maybe you remember when that first came, came up, this idea. <coughs> Not only is it questionable that data can and will be fin fin financialized as if there were. Can you maybe come down a little bit? Because I'm fighting against the microphone. <coughs> we should also question uh, the mining aspect of the metaphor itself. As if digging up resources is not a devastating environmental crime that ruins our planet from tar, sand mines to coal pits and digging for coal. Mining comes with a price. And we're about to find out uh, the price of data mining. And that, yeah, this is, uh, so this is, this is what uh, we will be busy with in, uh, in the next uh, decade. We want to disassociate ourselves from the dark side of this type of financialization of data. Mind the metaphors you use. Along the same lines, we need to get rid of the idea that data traces are things that we leave behind in some careless way. It not only legitimizes the dragnet, but it diverts attention from the rather aggressive techniques 
that inspect our browsers, networks and devices. We therefore need to reshape the possibilities of data production. And so this is also, again, a, maybe a bit more uh, a productive uh, element to it, but not only the scary part. No? This also means that we need to stop drawing parallels between computation machines and the human brains, between data and gray matter. It is true that the machines only work when all the relevant people are convinced. We, also, we need to tell other tales, and, and this is where the awareness part and the storytelling part maybe comes in. Convictions are not innocence. They're about remaking worlds. You invest in it. Let's stop celebrating the invisible, the deactivation retreat, now, because this is of course one of the other problems that is looming out there. That the problem of Western offline romanticism, right? Yeah, so but when the idea is uh, if, we, if we retreat in the off offline life, uh, we, will, uh, we will no longer be uh, uh, contributing. And it's really a question of whether this, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, it should be um, uh, our strategy because the, the, the DAOs is obviously uh, not, uh, it, it is a technological device Yes, uh, it is a technological device that uh, helps you to switch on and off. Yeah? But you could also say it helps you to switch on, no, not just off. Huh? It, it precisely uh, brings back the, the, the decision uh, into um, the hands of the, of the person. Right? Data prevention <coughs> is not a strike. It is only perceived as sabotage by the apparatus needing to uh, be fed by data. We do not believe in safe ways to, to deal with big data that have been uh, collected to monitor uh, and control populations. What we uh, prevent uh, here is a conditioned, ultimately boring life that limits uh, itself. Uh, it's precisely boring because everything has been taken care of. Remember that idea uh, uh, that you can just leave your, your life in, in the background are zooming in and uh, doing their good works uh, for you, right? That is the boring life. <coughs> what we prevent here, right? so let's get rid of the guilt uh, uh, to uh, do the forbidden and then feel the heavy presence of Big Brother, the all-seeing God that will re remember every tiny move or bad thought. Yeah? Let's see it as conceptual sex without consequences. Data prevention creates space for pleasure and possibilities. It's not done to save a precious space on our hard disks, right? The, I mean, that's the, that's the Calvinistic uh, reading. Uh, yeah. We have to save uh, the precious space on our hard disks uh, for, for a more useful... Uh, uh, yeah, no, 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 it's not about being in the space for possibility is breaking free from the dual pole of production of data and paranoia, right? And uh, maybe uh, <coughs> some of you who are into uh, Deleuze and Guattari would know uh, what they write uh, about the, this pole, these two poles, the pole of production, the pole of paranoia. We need to materially engage with the uh, enigmatic, the flawed, the partial, the impure, the surprise, the transgressive, the black swan. These days, prevention is an offensive strategy that questions uh, the hidden uh, power relations. Data prevention makes a fresh start and leaves behind the tired discourse uh, and the, 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 the discourse of uh, administrating the privacy. Yeah. Maybe we should add maybe a little bit more about that idea of administrating. I like that from the previous uh, <coughs> discussion we had here. The idea is um, no longer merely to filter install uh, blockers and build um, uh, walls, protecting ultimately unstable and open architectures. We create new design principles and uh, we hope also that the, the data protection is a new design principle we can bring that also to design schools and uh, to really explain that there's a very powerful element uh, in there. Uh, so that it's uh, really uh, a 
about making new, uh, new stuff. This is important. Data prevention goes in the offensive. Yeah? We're, ty we're tired uh, having to protect ourselves. Yeah? And join the, the new design movement, it says here. Make people aware of what happens and switch it off. Okay, uh, I want to uh, leave it here. And now we go to the second part of the manifesto. Uh, which are the sermons. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> so I tried uh, to write something in the style of Buddha research and in the style of Akin Bay, that are my heroes. Mm -hmm. So please forgive me. Of course, it's written in English, so it's my English. Yeah. So um, everything that it doesn't correspond to proper English is poetic. <laughs> 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 It's called the platform of the plumbing bird. Because uh, we thought of calling the, let's say, to collectively sign this manifesto as the plumbing birds. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why, that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> platform plumbers, that sounds good. We know what hides behind walls mm -hmm. and hope and how to drill all the necessary holes for good and bad, to fix, to change and maintain the pipes, to flood, disrupt, deny the walls. Responsibility is not control. Awareness is a merciful weapon for the wise. It's better to be aware today, and I will say to brothers and sisters, <laughs> and awake at night as we must, Standing for responsible data pregnancy <laughs> and fair data under a fair sky. And now the lecture. Plot holds data, dogs are accountable of confusion and all wrong opinions. And episteme, he calls the field of the wise that knows how to mark the land. We don't need faith into some theoretical dog. We stay on the side of the platform on which opinions fall as droplets. And we sum up upon us the ability to collect these waters, knowing what to share, to store, to let go, because we are willing to use this source wisely in the time of the drought. Now, I don't know how you say drought in English when there is no water in the drought, so the time of the drought. For humans, animals, and woods alike, because we share the point of view of the whole ecosystemical bunch. Citizens, <laughs> citoyens, hold up to this notion of belonging, hold up to your refined data politeness over their agendas of hidden data policies and know what you can then, well, teach to hold on before what you can only preach, well. They say money. Money without us has no economical trust. We can better put trust into money that we bake ourselves up and get on the path uphill to other ideas that are good, better. Virtualized economies fueled up by remote notions of debt are obsolete by design and are going to be worthless. Citizens conspire to unfulfill the one-way exploitation to grow ecosystems of polite automatic conversation between pairs instead of feeding motorized pushers of unwanted sleeping pills and snake oil and allow these drops to be clean water for all of the living souls on this planet. What we learn and sleep and love outside, the unattended trap of track it down, data silo stored, overvalued obviousness works against us, and we know. We have no agency on the data, and we should, and we know. And the data is not the truth, but their shadow, we know, to be used at will by self-hypnotized puppeteers to create fictions that does not compile into histories, advertising for unwanted goods, 
bedtime stories for the last of self-loving politicians serving the one ideals of the 1%. We should have agency on data. Because every shadow is a shadow of a body hit by the light under the sun. We shall be close to these droplets and their sources and the melting ice in spring and say no thanks when we must and please know when we feel is all right. We shall meet again on the verge of this gorgeous green land once a desertified mud bowl, each of us able to speak the language of choice to amuse the friends and make the children's laugh. And we will be called the platform plumbers, the designers of the garden's grid, the layers of the pipes of filters of the recycling ponds, the choosers of the right seed to keep, the letter go of wild grasses and bees, because no design holds the hope. We will be remembered as the observers of the waves, the happy carvers of algorithmic stones that needed to grow into no pyramidal graves. So let the policy of, of the politeness court speak tonight in, above, and below the grave. It's good, it's good, it's good. So it's just for us. I hope your devices are okay. If you want a moment to check them. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> so, but I guess um, yeah. we can have a, a round of uh, impressions. I will start with mine. I think truth this part that uh, Federico lyrically wrote. Yeah, I should have to. I'm excited by this, like, being offline. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the part of, uh, uh, yeah, immediatism, no? It's a little bit like, uh, we should mention Hacking Bay, you know, yes. and then. Yeah? Yes. Um, well, I think the truth is a very important part in, in, in your piece now because that justifies the fact we are um, facing this issue with poetry, with philosophy, because that is the most, uh, you know, the fil rouge in philosophy, uh, truth, uh, the discussion on what is truth is, uh, is uh, best, uh, I guess, argumented by Foucault through contemporary philosophy, but basically it is what this data uh, ideology, database ideology, the computationalism, the quantification of the self, the quantification of everything mm -hmm. is dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. True. So I think this is not a technical notion. This cannot be discussed, debate, uh, within a technical uh, discourse, with dealing with devices or protocols. Um, cannot be assessed not even by DAOs, not even by dealing with layer 2, 3, 1, or you call it of the iso Aussie, what is truly happening in your home, in your network space, in your mind, and in your perception. Blows try hard to assess what is true and try to actually develop uh, devices for consequences, the apparatus that are in place are there to remind us what is the consequence of truth. So basically, I think that uh, it's, uh, it's a humble yet uh, very uh, daring at the same time uh, attempt to actually talk about what, what we are facing is, is really uh, 
the prevention of, of a truth that is assessed just by quantifying the, the data that is passing between us, the devices that we use, the people that have built these devices, the people that monetize these little uh, packets of truth that flow around and that are presented to us with nicer interfaces to make us understand how many calories we burn today or how many uh, you know, uh, things we have, uh, we have eaten, how many people we have dated, how many uh, people we have had in our, in our event tonight. That, that is not really what we are looking for, like this sort of quantification. And I think um, I'm leaving the microphone to Kev to wrap up this. Yeah, okay. <coughs> yeah again, uh, this is an invitation of you and this first crowd here to, uh, to contribute. And uh, uh, <coughs> as I noticed, try to make clear in my reading, uh, uh, we're still um, uh, formulating the sentences and uh, trying to um, dig into the, uh, yes, not only the paradoxes, but uh, maybe the incoherent parts or parts where, <coughs> uh, you know, the, the parts that really uh, trigger our um, imagination. Uh, the parts that uh, that we have seen this afternoon here that needs to uh, be further uh, worked at. So um, um, yeah, th there will be uh, the the crypto design challenge uh, on November 25 in uh, in Paradiso. Uh, it's probably uh, it's probably going to be the next uh, place where uh, where we're going to um, launch it. And uh, yeah, there might be um, there might be more um, places, maybe Transmedia or other, uh, <coughs> where uh, where we can present uh, uh, this uh, Big Brother Awards coming up too. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's November 14. So yeah, so there's plenty of uh, places where we can uh, present um, next versions, uh, let's say, and, uh, and see how. Uh, and I would say let's leave, leave the path open uh, mm -hmm. at least for a while and, uh, and just see um, mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can even uh, have, have some kind of um, um, uh, redux uh, version at some point and extend yeah, it's it. It's pretty long for my Yeah, years. it's already pretty long, so we probably have so we have probably have a, a text, more like an essay. And then maybe we can ex extract from this uh, the manifesto itself. Yeah, that would be uh, my proposition. Um, I wonder how to give you this link of the path. Perhaps we shall put a paper there. Because, I mean, you are all on the, most of you are on the mail, uh, mail out that I sent out. So it's yeah. a very long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We make a link on data prevention, a very yeah. advanced software which has a cryptographic key in the URL. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they send it on yeah. 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 ah, oh, Let's make, let's make a, no, a QR code, a, a short URL. Yeah. Yeah. No, what, is, what is a kosher yeah. version? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bitleaks? Yeah, Bitleaks.
keep spy. out of this I being like a spy it. phone it's because my kids want yeah. the yeah. smartphone. Like Who it. doesn't want the smartphone? Here it is. Uh, this is the one. So, yeah, I'm going to make it more visible. Test it first because I don't trust the settings <laughs> until I see it working. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so this is. Oh, okay. Can you make it big? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to make it. Oh. That you find it on GitHub. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All the bugs belongs to GitHub. <laughs> yes, there it is. Power of Emacs. You we don't advertise it. Okay. You need Emacs to do this. So we have a service <laughs> which is. Uh, <laughs> the pad yeah, is uh, hosted uh, in uh, our office, actually physically, which is a computer. Yeah. Ah. This pad is uh, hosted in our office down in this boat. So, yeah. you know, and it's not on the cloud. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't need to create a user. You don't need to identify or write. It's not in the cloud. Yeah, it's not in the cloud. It's actually down underwater, yeah. even in Amsterdam. It's yeah. underwater for Amsterdam. Yeah. So just worry if, if uh, the water level gets too high, maybe. No, we float. No, no, we float. Yeah, so, float. Yeah, yep. uh, and uh, you can uh, just connect and uh, start editing. Just be responsible. I am actually not worried about the group of people uh, that is uh, gathered here. You are all very, very special. Mm -hmm. So I'm really uh, thankful for everyone to coming uh, uh, today and to witness uh, all what happened, uh, last but not least, the first announcement of this manifesto. We will uh, uh, work on the materials, uh, obviously, we have filmed uh, it was announced, and we will make them as uh, best presentable as possible in the respect uh, of uh, everyone's uh, uh, privacy, but also uh, uh, will to share some thoughts in, in the proper way. So we are not being afraid of showing ourselves. Uh, I guess that's clear, but we need to find a mutual trust and a mutual way to actually frame and, and present our, our thoughts and our notions in the best way possible. I'm very confident we will do. The crew that uh, has uh, helped us uh, uh, produce this night, but also produce uh, DAOs and many things that we do with Dynog is uh, very special. Obviously, you have noticed uh, Federico is uh, a jack of many trades, uh, from poet to, to filmmaker. But last but not least, uh, Victor Neuenhaus, the man behind the camera. We are very honored to have a new <laughs> artist that usually works on, uh, on, uh, on a film and is uh, making uh, an exception for us, probably. And Ivan, the hacker in the back that uh, uh, grows his beard and, uh, you know, despite being so young, he has a longer beard than any one of us, so he's the real groom in the house. And, <laughs> and uh, Jennifer that uh, is uh, joining us and is also leading the crypto uh, challenge. So uh, I hope uh, we will really say more in Dutch. Nina, who is uh, also quite a ninja with crypto things, so she is joining us in the next operations on DAOs and other projects. And uh, everyone else that really joined, it's, it's, uh, I, I know most of you and I think it's really, really a special crowd. So thank you very much. Uh, keep an eye on DAOs. And uh, please contribute also to this manifesto. We will be reading it closely and trying to get what is the piece of it into uh, also a technical implementation. Mm -hmm. We cannot use uh, uh, industrial design notions of efficiency. We cannot use business experts. We, this is not the project. We are going to develop it with this sort of community iterations that we are doing also now. And uh, it's very important to have them uh, uh, intense and deep enough before going out there. And probably the next iteration for DAOs will be going out there, propose ourselves to the public. This necessarily will make us shallow. And uh, we are, uh, you know, being aware of it first is the, the first step to actually avoiding it. So awareness is indeed the first step 
from making what you want out of a project. And we are aware that we are going through a road of self-production of a product, uh, perhaps, you know, doing a crowdfunding is uh, way too narrowly for our taste, but uh, we are challenging this, this step and we are seeing what we can do out of it, trying to keep the contents intact and the doubts uh, proliferating. So thank you again very much. Please stay around for another round of drinks. Thank you.